before we start this video, a large thank you to AJ Nab, RCA, Neo GQ, and Robert for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hello guys, and today we're going to make a firebomb. So, let's go on into our scripts folder here. I'm going to go on to the items folder, and I'm going to right click and create a new C Sharp script. I'm going to call this one Bomb Consumable Item. So we want to throw this, make it do damage, whatever it hits, and explode and do additional damage in a splash area. So let's make a namespace. It's going to call this SG. I'm going to erase the start and update function as is per tradition. And I'm going to start off by actually making the Bomb Consumable Item derive from the class Consumable Item. So we inherit all the other variables and such from that class and functions. Uh, I'm going to make a create asset menu up here. I'm just going to say menu name is equal to, whoops, didn't mean to hit enter. Just going to say consumable, or items rather, sorry, slash consumables. Uh, and I'm going to call it slash bomb item. Now in the future you can have like uh, lightning urns or hex jars, uh, black fire bombs, but we're going to make this the base for all of our bombs. You can make alterations and edits uh, as you see fit. So let's start off by making a header with a velocity. This is going to be how fast the bomb travels through the air. Also, how heavy it is. So we'll start off making a couple ints. The first one going to be upward velocity. I'm going to initialize that at 50. Nope, not 5. 50. Then I'm going to make another public int and call this one forward velocity. And I'm going to initialize this one at 50 as well. And lastly, I will make an int and call it bomb mass, which is how heavy the bomb is. If you want to get really technical with it, I'm just going to initialize that at 1. Okay, next, right below there, we're going to need a couple more things. I'm going to make a header again. I'm going to start by saying active model. And this is basically because when we throw the bomb, I should make this to live bomb model. Uh, when we throw the bomb, we actually are going to instantiate a different model with a damage glider. Um, and it'll make sense shortly. So first, we got a public game object, live bomb model. And then right below that, we're going to make a public. Actually, we don't, we don't need that one for now. Um, we'll come back to that in the next part. So just, we just have the live bomb model right now. It's, it's very similar to how we handle our spells. There's a warm-up uh, game object and then the actual live damaging effect game object. So let's make a header for base damage. Let's make a public int base damage. I'm going to initialize mine at 200. You can make whatever you want. This is again just for testing purposes. And I'm going to override the function attempt to consume item and we're actually going to delete um, the entirety of, or not delete rather, or not use the base version of this function because we're going to use something completely different. It is similar, but it needs to function different. So we're going to say if current item amount is greater than zero, uh, then we're going to actually do the emotion. Um, if not, we're going to play shrug because we don't have any bombs. So if we have more than one bomb, we want people to throw the bomb. So we're going to play the animation throw um, or whatever throwing animation you have or will have. So I'm just going to put it here player animator manager dot play target animation. I think mine is called throw. And then I'm just going to, oh, I'm actually going to say consume animation. Sorry, because we put that into the inspector. So just putting your consume animation and then say true. Okay. Now that looks good. Now, right below that, let's say game object. We want to instantiate the model in our hand. Bomb model is equal to instantiate item model. And then we're going to do that on the location of our Oh, it's uh, actually the weapon slot manager's project. I get these mixed up. The weapon slot manager dot right hand slot dot transform dot position. And then we want to say quaternion dot identity, which means it will have the rotation of the, the game model itself. And then we want to parent it under the weapon slots manager dot right hand slot. So instantiate it's on your hands, parent it under your hand, and the rotation is whatever the bomb's rotation is when you instantiate it. Okay, that looks good. So now we have a bomb in our hands and we're gonna play the animation to throw the bomb. And we're putting it on our right hand, the rotation is whatever it is on the model and it's gonna parent under our right hand's transform. So that looks fantastic. Now, let's move on. Right below that, we want to say player effects manager dot instantiated effects model is equal to the bomb model. That way we can delete this after we've actually successfully or unsuccessfully completed a throw. Now I have this bomb. I'm just going to drag this into the scene here now. And I'm going to create an empty parent. And I'm going to call this item pivot, similar to weapon pivot, how we handle our weapons. I don't know why that, uh, I'm going to reset the transforms. Not sure why that happens. I'm going to make another parent on top of this and just call this, um, I'm going to call it firebomb. And again, I'll have to reset the transforms, I think. Not sure why it does that. So I'll just reset all of these transforms. And now we have our bomb. 
Now, if you're using Cinti models like I am and you haven't updated them, uh, like the one in this video, you're going to have to make the weapon pivot scaling uh, 100 times bigger because the models that Cinti provides are actually bugged and their transforms are incorrect. So let's go ahead and right click and create items, consumables, bomb item. And I'm just going to call this firebomb. Then I'm going to drag in the firebomb game object or prefab rather I just made with uh, the weapon pivot and such under the item model. And then for the consume animation, I'm just going to say throw. And now, as you can see, this is my animation. It's just a guy throwing something. I'm just going to drag that into the animator and make it run back to empty. So I'm just going to open this up here now, look for a good spot. I think we handle most of our actions on the left side. So I'll just put that, yeah, I think right above here is fine. And I have it called bomb throw. I'm just going to rename it the throw because we kind of a general purpose throw. I'm going to make a transition back to the empty state, and that looks good. Okay. Now, I'm going to equip the firebomb itself onto the current consumable. And I'm going to change the max amount to 20 and the current amount to 20. Now, I'm going to actually go to the bomb model now and go to the item pivot. And like I said, I'm using a Sinti model, so unfortunately I have to scale this up 100 times. But if you update the Sinti model package, they actually fix that. In my solo project, it is fixed. Um, but that's going to mess with your transforms, so make sure you go in there too if you scale it up and you uh, you reset all your transforms properly. I'm also going to make a red material over it so you can clearly see it's in our hand. And then I'm going to start the game here now. I'm going to go into the game here now and press the throw button. You will see a bomb spawns in our hand. However, it's uh, not positioned all that well. So what we want to do is the same thing we do with our weapons. We go to the item pivot itself. We edit the pivot. And then we go in here and just place that in your hand. Uh, I can't really see it all that well right there. So I'll tell you what, I'm just going to copy the component like it is right now. And then I'm going to actually um, catch it mid throw. Yep, right there. Gonna be a bit more meticulous about it. Okay, so let's hide the sword for now. Now let's go over to the bomb and let's actually make it look like he's about to throw it and not like it's going inside of his wrist and breaking his bones. So again, we want to edit the pivot. Oh, goodness, zoom in. My mouse wheel is having some problems. It keeps zooming in and out whenever I try to zoom in. All right, item pivot. Let's turn this over on its side a little bit. And that looks, let's uh, rotate it that way. Let's go down there. That kind of looks like it's inside of his hand. Let's, uh, let's see what, I'm gonna get a better angle on this. There we go. This is gonna be much better. Push it forward and out. And that looks really good. Yes, okay. That's wonderful. So when you have it to your liking, again, just copy the transform of the item pivot and then paste it on the game objects item pivot that you've already saved as a prefab. Wonderful. Okay. So now we have a bomb that instantiates in our hand and uh, it's ready to be thrown. So now what? Well, let's get to the next little bit of logic and that's we want to actually delete this model and spawn the live bomb uh, when we actually throw it successfully. So in order to tell when we throw it successfully, we want to use an animation event. That way, if we're mid-throw, we can become interrupted and not successfully throw the bomb. So if someone hits you while you're throwing it, you won't throw the bomb. If you get mostly through the throw, you'll throw the bomb. So on the player weapon slot manager, I'm going to make a public void. And I'm just going to call this successfully throw firebomb. You can put this on any script that you want, honestly. I think it suits uh, the weapon slot manager the best because I'm just going to handle anything to do with weapons and weapon models on this script. So I'm going to say first destroy the player effects manager dot instantiated effects model because as you know we're saving that that warm up bomb on our hand. Let's get rid of that. And then we're going to say bomb consumable item of type bomb consumable item fire bomb item is equal to inventory or player inventory manager dot current consumable as we're going to cast it as a bomb consumable item. So this assumes if you're calling this function you do have a bomb consumable in your um, quick slot. So then we're going to say game object dot active model bomb is equal to instantiate fire bomb item dot I think we call it live bomb model and then we're going to instantiate that in the right hand slot transform and this is where we need to add some more logic right now so we actually want to call upon our player camera and the reason we do this is because we want to make sure the bomb is coming out rotating the right way so when you throw it it's going in front of you and if you're throwing it unlocked it will go wherever you're facing so let's start off by just calling the camera handler. I get these mixed up. I call it the player uh, camera handler on my other project. So I'm just going to call this player camera. 
And then I'm going to come down here and say player camera is equal to find object of type. This is on awake. And then we're going to say, oh, I almost did it again. Camera handler. There we go. I tell you what, I'm actually going to rename that to camera handler because let's again, keep the naming conventions the same. I get my projects across sometimes. Okay. So back down here, camera handler, and then dot, I believe it's called the camera pivot transform. Yes. Uh, dot rotation. Oh, and right hand slot dot transform should be transform dot position. My bad. There we go. Excellent. Okay. So we have, um, a bomb now and stance in her hand. That's wonderful. And then we're going to say active bomb or active model bomb dot transform dot rotation is equal to quaternion dot Euler. And we're going to pass our camera handler dot camera pivot transform dot Euler angles dot X. And then we're going to pass our, we want to get our lock on transform here. I don't know where I saved that. I think I saved it in the player manager. Let me just double check. Yes. Okay. So it is under the player manager dot lock on transform dot Euler angles dot Y. And then we're going to say zero. And all this does is it makes sure that basically when you throw the bomb, you're going to throw it where your camera is aiming up and down and where your player is facing. So the bomb will always be thrown in front of you and you can angle it up or down based on your camera looking up or down. And next, let's add some pseudo codes. So what are we going to do next? Well, we want to actually detect bombs damage collider because it has one once it becomes live. And then we're going to want to, of course, assign some values to the damage collider. And we're going to add force to the rigid body of the bomb to move it through the air. That's what we had those variables before on the, uh, the item itself for upward force and forward force. And then we're going to check for friendly fire to make sure you can't bomb your allies or yourself. And then we're going to create an explosion and have it do splash damage. So the bomb can hit you and do damage, but you can also get hit by the splash damage of the explosion for even more damage. Okay. So let's go to the animator first. I'm just going to find the throw animation. There we go. Okay. So we have the throw. I'm going to come right here at the peak of the throw, right when the forward motion starts at the peak add an animation event and I'm just going to say come down until you find successfully throw firebomb and there you go now that looks good okay so let's duplicate our firebomb and let's call this firebomb underscore uh, live and if you are using a Sinti model you want to reset the uh, weapon pivot on this back to one otherwise you'll have a giant firebomb that gets instantiated um, the one on your hand needs to be expanded up I'm just going to turn this yellow so you can see the difference Okay, now let's actually go and whoop, I got to change the transform settings, scale that back down to one and go to the item pivot here. Make sure that's all reset because if not, it's going to be totally off the screen. There we go. All right. Now, if I go back into the game here now and I actually hit play, I'm going to hit the consume item button and you will see I throw the firebomb. It disappears and this yellow one instantiates in its place. So in the next video, we're actually going to make this bomb live. We're going to give it a damage collider. We're going to make sure whatever it hits, it does damage and it will explode and do additional damage to anything around it. This will also scale off of your strength if you would like it to or whatever stat. And I'm going to make it so we actually update the uh, identification or the item icon in the consumable slot. If you guys did enjoy this video, please don't forget to drop a like, leave a comment. It does genuinely help my series out so, so much. And if you're feeling super generous, guys, check out my patrons below. As always, a large and special thank you to my patrons. It's because of you guys I can literally keep doing this, and I really enjoy doing this. So I will see you guys next time in part two, where we'll conclude our bombs. Oh, and also a note for everybody else, I have started prototyping the bow and archery system, so I think when we're done bombs, I will begin with that.